Welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. I want to ask you one question. Do you believe this whole notion that there will be a blue wave? That the Democrats will sweep over all of Congress? They will take the Senate? They will take the House? Well, unfortunately, I have some bad news. Uh, and that bad news is already based on uh, returns for early voting, some of the uh, some of the uh, contested races that have already been decided. Now, according to the president, eight of the nine heavily watched races have already been decided in favor of his part of the GOP, right? So Candace Owens and veteran Republican strategist Ed Rollins uh, discussed the conservative claims of social media censorship and the in the 2018 midterms on Sunday Morning Futures with host Maria Bartiromo. Now what I'm going I'm going to just skip directly to that uh, interview. So uh, Ed Rollins, Republican strategist. Now before you all begin. I'm libertarian. I'm not for Republicans. I'm not for Democrats. Uh, however, I am for logic, reason, reasonableness, uh, actual concern for the American people, and time and time again, the strategy of the Democratic Party is literally simply to gain power to then run roughshod over the United States. It is not good. It is not good. It is not good. I don't believe any reasonable person would ever be in favor of the Democratic Party. Now, that being said, as a libertarian, I do not see quite the division that the Democrats and the Republicans see on their own turfs. But let's, let's get on with this. Uh, well, equally as important, and a lot of people said, the social media that he used, talking about the president, this tweeting and what have you, was detrimental to him. It was not at all. Quote, he dominated the, the last two and a half years. No president, no candidate has ever dominated the media, both the cable news, the social media, what have you. He understands it well. His people understand it well. I don't think you all understand that uh, really in the past we have actual sitting presidents who have been completely irrelevant while in office because we didn't see any relevance to our lives to the president. Same thing with Congress. Completely irrelevant. Now the news, in its effort to cheerlead the Democrats and taking on this sort of, uh, trying to ascribe a sort of rock star personality to Democrats, uh, has made uh, uh, younger people think that they are relevant. Do you understand that when the federal government passes any sort of legislation, any sort of law, it's going to be like four years before it actually impacts you. I want you to think of that. When you look at politics, I want you to understand that the, that the time, the window that they're talking about is like four years. Now, it has been the case that this particular president has been relevant every single second that he has been in the public eye since the time that he was a candidate. I'm not praising him, I'm telling you facts. I'm not praising him, I'm telling you facts. As soon as he stepped on that escalator, he was, he was on. Lights, camera, action, on. Uh, continuing on with uh, Mr. Rollins, I I would think uh, 
I, I think a certain extent they see it as a threat. Every day, people are sitting there waiting for his tweet to respond one way or another. Now, I followed the president on Twitter just to, just to make sure I understood what he was saying. Because if you don't follow him and you watch the media, the mainstream media, invariably... You're going to get a twist. You're going to get a spin. You're going to get a twisting of the words. Oh, twist, do not twist. Oh, twist. Oh, he said this. That's not what he said. And here's why he's tweeting. So that the media cannot twist his words. Now, that being said, Twitter has programmed its algorithm to completely remove any positive replies to any of his tweets. So when you go to any of the presidential tweets, you see nothing but disparaging remarks, insults, uh, disparaging remarks, insults, disparaging remarks, insults, uh, uh, bringing up stuff that happened six months ago, a year ago, or even stuff that happened three years ago or four years ago but saying that it is due to this current president. Four years ago, this current president? That's a trick. Okay, and, and then no matter if you respond or not, you're, if you try and respond and say, you know, you, know that's, you know that's incorrect. You're not gonna get anything because the algorithm removes anything positive or any sort of defense or anything uh, correcting any facts, right? And if all of a sudden it's a one-sided game in which you stop the people who are supportive of him, then it's not. It's not fair, and it's certainly a violation of those people's rights. Do you understand? Let me explain to you. Do you understand? People kept saying, hey, Twitter, you should remove the president's tweets. Hey, Twitter, you should remove the president's tweets. Hey, Twitter, you should remove the president's tweets. Tweets. Well, uh, it was argued to Twitter that, hey, before you even listen to that, you must understand what's going on. You have now become a town square, and because of that, the general public has a right to directly address its president. They have a right to voice their opinion directly to this president. Because of this, the president of the United States has a complete immunity to whatever policy you think that he can violate, to whatever rule or regulation that you have, he is completely immune to all of that. And a lot of that stuff is completely open to interpretation. You understand that part? So uh, if Twitter were so inclined, Twitter could remove. Uh, so not to toot my own horn, but there were two sides to a political question on Twitter concerning Nevada, uh, specifically question three. There was advertisement for question three, and there was advertisement against question three. Now, I kept seeing four, 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 and I, and I finally I responded, I said, I think it's quite crazy quite interesting that I see no against question three in any of the advertisement that I see. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. I should see Nevada advertisement, no matter what it is. I should see Nevada advertisement. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, Shikama's, you know, the greatest or what have you, but uh, we, we now see four against, four against, four against, evenly. And I'm on Twitter all day. 
I checked Twitter about, I want to say, uh, like 30 times a day. And I stay on there. Uh, when I get on there, I'm on there for quite a, uh, a while. And, of course, am I calling out, uh, not to, again, not to toot my own horn, but these are just the facts. If it's coincidence, it's just coincidence. But I got a bunch of likes on my tweets. And lo and behold, all of a sudden, the, the, the uh, against uh, advertisements came through. Now, although Twitter has said that it will not remove uh, the president's tweets, they have removed sitting congressmen. They have removed sitting senators off of Twitter. And when they uh, held a congressional thing, they accomplished absolutely nothing. Now, uh, what could Congress have done? Now, of course, you have the only people that they're removing, the only sitting congressmen that they're removing, the only Senate, Sen sitting senators that they are removing are, of course, GOP senators and GOP congressmen. Now, uh, do you think that the uh, Democratic uh, congressmen or the Democratic senators are going to lift one finger to at, at all come to the defense of their GOP congressmen or GOP Senate colleagues? No. So, although uh, they control the majority of the House, although they control the majority of the Senate, absolutely nothing was accomplished when uh, the uh, all of the tech giants went to Congress to go before the uh, 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 committees, right? Because at the end of the line, at no point did Congress or the Senate say, hey, you know all those cozy contracts that we have with you? We're going to remove all of those millions of dollars. So it's, it's a tiger with no teeth. It's an eagle with no beak. It's a chicken without feet. Huh? A tiger without stripes. A lion without any sort of teeth or claws or anything. It's, it's a paper tiger. And, and then uh, these people, of course, run roughshod over these congressmen, over these senators, who are, what, 50, 60, 70 years old. And, and, and the one, the one uh, congresswoman said, how do you access the, uh, the tears? And, the, um, and uh, Zuckerberg said, the what? Uh, I don't... The what? Come again? <laughs> so there was nothing accomplished. There's nothing. They didn't say, say uh, from henceforth on, you cannot remove anybody in any uh, political ad, any political station uh, from your platform. So therefore, they removed actual candidates who paid money to advertise their political race paid money uh do you understand how outside the bounds of a contract that is now uh there was a certain judges and sort of in certain google cases that said point blank this has doesn't even approach a contract. And what is a contract? A meeting of the minds. You don't make a contract say by, by knocking on my front door, you agree to everything that, that, that I want. And I can change it at any time. The judge said, this is not a contract. This is some 
dictatorship that you know I have, and and how any lawyer sat down with Google and said this is this is a contract you want to come up with, and these are the terms of service that you want to come up with. That just by visiting the site you agree, there is no agreement. Because you can't contract away your rights with nobody, not even with the federal government, and definitely not with a private citizen or a private company. But yet and still, Twitter is removing GOP candidates running for office who paid them for advertisement. Let's get on with this blue wave. Okay, Maria Bartiroma, nobody knows the elections better than you. She's talking to uh, uh, Mr. Rollins. What are you seeing in terms of the midterm elections, Ed Rollins? Uh, and we have, uh, the, this of course was done 80 days before the election. Rollins said, well, there's a lot that is going on to, going to happen in those 80 days. Historically, the last 21 midterm elections, the president's party has lost 30. 30 seats and four Senate seats. That's not going to happen. I will predict that right today. And Miss Maria said, really? Mr. Rollins said, we may lose five. We may lose 10. You're going to lose some seats just because of the makeup of Congress. Now, what does he mean by that? There are certain districts that you elect your congressman from and the way the district is drawn, it's a GOP district. It's a Democrat district. And nothing that the uh, a Democrat or the GOP uh, opposition can do will switch it to a GOP or a Democrat or what have you, right? There is no blue, blue wave out there. The Senate, which will, we had big opportunities, have not turned out to be quite so. There's probably five to eight Senate seats on both sides that are in play. I think we will hold the Senate. I think we will hold the House. Margins may be smaller in the House, but it's certainly going to hold it. There is your blue wave. Oh, you think a Republican strategist is going to tell you uh, the wrong information. This particular Republican strategist, I think he's a Republican in name only. I think he's, I don't think he's in particular a Republican strategist. I think he is a uh, conservative in the, in, the, in the sense of he is a logical person who does analysis logically. Bernie Sanders said the same thing. A few other Democrats said the same thing. I uh, don't. I don't know if they were off the record or on the record, but they have all said the same thing. When actually pressed, is there going to be a blue wave? They said no. Now let me uh, let me continue in part two, and in part two, I'll go over my analysis of what is really going on for these midterms. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a comment. Uh, please try and watch the entire video if you have not 